Podcast, your review and discussion podcast. I am your host, Norman Senzo. With me today is Tortera. Hey, Norman. I brought cookies for you. Oh, nice. Like, I could really use some cookies right now. Yeah, look, I even made the one, this one cookie that looks like you. Oh, um, y- yay. I-, I-, I don't know how to feel about that. You must accept my generous offer. Oh, y- yes, I will, I will. And I made you some cookies too. They're chocolate chips. Ooh, I like chocolate chip. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you really like them. <laughs> They're actually raisins. <gasps> you monster. <laughs> but anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review My Little Pony, Pony Life, Season 1, Episode 16. Uh, and we are going to review iCookie and Keynote Pie. Oh my goodness. <laughs> they just hit me. They hit you on the right key. <laughs> God. Uh, anyway, in iCookie, Pinkie Pie accidentally creates a batch of desserts with minds of their own while left alone at Sugar Cube Corner. So, let's see. Uh, there, There's some facts here. The, the title of iCookie is a reference to the 1950s Isaac As- Asimov science uh, science fiction novel i robot and or its 2014 film adaptation so yay that's something cool um uh, so tara what do you think like what's your first impressions about i cookie it was pretty interesting it kind of reminds me of um a certain episode back in french Biz magic i forget the name but um it 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 feels like they're trying to be like French Biz Magic, where they bring up all these uh old lessons. Like, oh yeah, this this uh lesson, you know, we should probably bring it up in case people forget. So they just play it again. I don't know. This is just what I got. I don't remember what episode they re- referenced for this one or a previous one. Like, what was it? I th- don't remember. I think it was um. Too many. I don't know. I think I don't know the exact name of the episode, but it's when Pinkie Pie cloned herself so many times. I think that's too many Pinkie Pies, and yes, I, I do felt that, but it was kind of different for this one. Like I'm not saying it's exactly like it, but it's like they just changed it up a bit. Yeah, I mean the way that they portray it seems like okay, they were going for the too many Pinkie Pies, but no, they didn't. Yeah, and. As for me, uh, I like the cookies. Like the cookie looks really cool and interesting, and how they went to, <laughs> how they got to life, and the way that they ended was dark. Anywho, uh, in Keynote Pie, Pinkie Pie suffers. You know, I'm gonna stop there for a bit. So anyway, if you have not watched this episode yet, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So, we start off with the episode with, well, Pinkie Pie in Sugar Cube Corner having a day all to herself, well, not really, and wants to hang out and do stuff with, well, Gummy, because, well, all her friends have stuff to do, so she's kind of free. So now she wants to hang out with Gummy, but it seems that Gummy has plans of his own. So, Pinkie Pie has the whole place to herself. And decides to throw a party with lots of cookies. Somehow, I don't know why or how, uh, <laughs> this makes her think of her friends. And all of the things that they are in Sugar Cookie Corner. Like the half-eaten cookie, the squeaky bar stool, or Rarity's book that's in her bakery to Fluttershy's huge plush rabbit. I think that's a dog, actually. Really? Yeah, it's, it's a plush dog. Oh, okay. And to Twilight's cloning magic thingy from previous episodes. Continuity! I know! So, Pinky decides that, hey, this would be a great idea for me to, well, clone stuff. But the idea that she went through was a bit strange. So she jams in cookies and a chess piece, something like that, or potion, I don't know. Uh, it's a potion. And somehow, 
Oh, okay. <laughs> and somehow he created a batch of cookies that looks like her friends. And this, these are pretty cute. These are really, really, really good cookies. So I'm going to pause here. So Tara, what do you think? I like how it starts off with, uh, well, first off, I like how Gummy actually shows some expression because in Friendship of Magic, you couldn't tell what he was thinking, just a blank face. And this one, Pinky's like, we're going to be able to hang out. And Gummy's like, just spits out a hat in the briefcase, like, nope, I ain't having any of that. See ya. And then all of a sudden, the tumbleweed comes across. He's like, nope, I'm leaving too. All of a sudden, I have a, uh, meaning of life and I'm out of here. <laughs> Yeah, th- th- those are pretty cool moments, those funny moments. I decided not to talk about them because I wanted you to talk about them, you know. <laughs> <if> you... <laughs> oh, yes, <clears throat> carry on. I like how they set it up and, you know, get the continuity going with the projector. It's it's a very nice thing and all the cookies, it's a very cute thing. I was kind of a bit upset on how it ended, but we'll get to that later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. True, true. Uh, so anywho, let's continue on. So after the cookies, uh, after Pinky made those cookies, she kind of plays with them, uh, you know, which, um, sorry, <laughs> you know, uh, move them around, like how you make animal cookies and whatnot. And yay, uh, she, she plays, makes friendly voices. The most jarring one is Fluttershy because <laughs> it's Andrea Lipman, um, voicing Pinkie Pie, mimicking uh, Fluttershy, <laughs> is that degree of separation where, oh my god, what's going on here? But anywho, when she goes over to reach for um, Rainbow Dash, she's gone. And it seems that the cookies are alive. Ah! And the cookies want to have their own independence. And Pinkie Pie doesn't want that and wants to take care of them and do stuff. And... That somehow creates the cookie uprising where they tie Pinkie Pie down and the cookie tries to escape, saying that there's more to life than being in the bakery and whatnot. So Pinkie Pie understands this and sets them free. And the cookies go out and have their adventure. By the way, when Pinkie Pie closes the door, it starts to rain. And with that, Pinky decides to clean up shop and, well, um, just get everything nice and clean. Her friends come back and say that they miss Pinkie Pie and ask her, how are you? Or do you miss us and whatnot? And yeah, uh, with that, episode ends. So, Tara, what do you think? Well, like, like I said before, I, I enjoyed this episode, iCookie. It has a lot of funny moments here and there. I like how it starts off and, you know, you see cute little versions of the cookie, even though the cookie Rainbow Dash doesn't speak. As for the ending, I honestly thought she was going to eat them. Like, oh. the way she gets out of the rope and everything, she picks them up. She's like, yeah, I understand. You want to go out and have your freedom. But there's already uh my own friends. I can't let you escape. And then just eats them. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's I dark. honestly thought that's what was going to happen. Yeah, that's dark, but nah, it didn't happen that way. Instead, uh, Pinkie Pie lets them go free, which is uh, okay, I guess. But then they got soaked up in the rain. Yeah, I mean, like, talk about dark endings. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I don't know how to feel about that one, really. <laughs> like, it's not a bad episode, but it's, it, it's, it's just one of those things where it's just there. Yeah, in all honesty, it was an interesting ending where they're doing dark humor, which is kind of cool, I guess. But anywho, um, as for me, this episode was fun. fun. It was fun to watch. Uh, the insanity of Pinkie Pie in Pony Life seems to go up to 11, but at the same time, too, uh, she tries to tone it down by being logical yet failing at it yeah that's true but the cookies were cute too like th- those things were awesome that makes you want to make your own batch of cookies and do so yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah th- 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 there's nothing more to that I mean it's pretty simple it's short so let's move on to the second one and that is Keynote Pie in Keynote Pie 
PewDiePie suffers from stage fright before having to give a keynote speech at Sugar Cube Corner. Hmm. So anyway, uh, Tara, what do you think? I feel like it's another one of those episodes again where they're uh, trying to be like Friendship is Magic, but with a different tone. Like I remember, um, again, I don't know the name of the episode, but it's the one where Fluttershy has stage fright and then her friends, you know, confront her fear about it. Yeah, yeah, that one. I remember that one. Yeah, I don't remember the name, but it's almost like that. But except now in this one, it's with a different character that has stage fright, and instead of one person trying to help her out, it's all of the all of her friends that are trying to help her out. Uh, for me, it's the total opposite because uh, for me, what I got was from the comics. The uh, who, who is Fluttershy's brother? Oh God, what was his name again? Breezy something? No, no, Breezy. The thing is, uh, maybe Philly, Philly Vanilli or Philly Vanilla. I don't know. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I don't remember his name. Wow, like we're 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 great. Wait, we're we talking about Flash Eye's brother. Yes. His, oh, I thought we were name. talking about the name, name of the episode. Oh no, Just I think it's a uh, Zephyr Breeze. Yeah, Zephyr Breeze. Yes. Okay. So yeah, uh, for for me, um, this one reminds me of Zephyr Breeze because. Uh, Zephyr was kind of struggling with confidence issue in the comics. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't, re- haven't read anything about him in the comics. I don't know about him in the episodes. Oh, did you miss that one? I think I did. Oh, okay. But yeah, uh, it, it was. It reminded me of that because in the comic he had confidence issue. He was great at doing his work, but the problem is he had confidence issue. So, uh, in Kino Pie, it felt the same. Uh, but anyway, if you have not watched this episode yet, pause your and go do so. Welcome back. So, we <coughs> we start off the episode with Pinkie Pie reading a book. Reading a book about being, well, a successful business pony, something like that. And getting margins, numbers, number numbers. So, yes, uh, she's go doing so. Uh, fun fact or fun trivia, the book that she's reading is similar to a book that Steve Jobs had before. And in fact, the whole episode revolves around quote-unquote Steve Jobs. And if you guys got no idea who Steve Jobs is, he is the guy that propelled Apple to where it is today. Yes. So, anywho... Pinky reads books and decides, hey, I want to expand uh, Sugar Cube Corner and... How do I put this? Expand Sugar Cube Corner and um, make the business great. I totally don't remember what she said when she was setting all this up. You remember, Tara? <clears throat> no, I don't remember. I know that she just got the book and she was telling about her investments and then next you know she's in a suit. Yeah. So uh, I have the, what you call this, transcript and it says, how to succeed, or the book title is, how to succeed in Equestria without really trying. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Hmm. All right. <laughs> oh my goodness. <clears throat> so... Uh... I'm just gonna trying to remember because okay the tech world. So basically, what Pinky is trying to do is just um create some kind of business where it's tech related and it has bitcoins and Ethereum and whatever it is. So people uh, put money into her business and she somehow gets rich or expands. Looks like it. So why? Wha- she gets into her Steve Jobs sweater and somehow gets everything planned and ready for the keynote. Seems that she has all the confidence in the world, even having an assistant there to... I won't say assistant, I say stagehand. Um, to get her uh, speech ready. And when she is about ready to get up on stage... Suddenly, it hit her that she is having stage fright. And I'm going to stop here. Tara, what do you think? It was a bit odd seeing that she had an assistant. 
Because you never see this guy anywhere. It's like, now you think about Pinky has her own shop because apparently Mr. and Mrs. Cake don't exist. <clears throat> mm-hmm. No, no. So uh, it's like... From what sh- I remember... Sorry. Uh, from what I remember, uh, they sold the business to Pinky. Hmm. Yeah, that's for what I remember. I, I don't really... Okay, let's just say my memory of Pony Life is not uh, reliable. Yes. Well, you can't really remember much about Pony Life since episodes come and go so quickly. Oh, yeah, that's true also. <laughs> but carry on. But, um... Uh, oh, yeah. So it makes you wonder, how is she keeping all this in check with, you know, probably the bills and whatnot... So I guess it kind of explains why she has an assistant. Because everything Pinky said, the assistant would come and be like, oh, you need this. And then Pinky would be like, you know me so well. And they do a little hoof bump. But I, I don't think that the assistant is part of Sugar Creek Corner. I feel like this, uh, he's just like a stage hand for the keynotes. That's true. Well, that's what I think. I, I'm not sure if it's true. Yeah, and but I do. It's it's one of those things where it's like you know what's gonna happen, but at the same time, especially with this one, it is relatable. Like I know there'd be some people. I have my moments too, where you know you're so excited for the day to come, you're so excited to go there, but then as soon as the day comes and you get ready to go up on stage, and it's like I can't do this anymore. I'm so nervous. Or like going to get a vaccine, but being afraid of needles. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <sighs> True, 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 true. So, anywho, uh, anything more to add? No. I do, I do have one. Uh, I do like the part where she, all her, all of her color is just gone, and now she's just grayscale. Yeah, that's true. <coughs> that kind of shows her that she's, well, okay, um, she's not Pink and Mina Diane Pie, but at least, um, hmm, this reminds me of Discorded. Remember? Say what? Discorded Pinky. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but in that one, uh, Discord kind of subverts her role and whatnot. Yeah, whatever. But this one is just like, oh no, she's just so nervous that all of her color is dream. And you yeah. heard, um, what you call this? Uh, you heard, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Expressions of, oh, you look pale. What happened to you? Or, or the color's gone out of your face in something like that. So this is literally the color's gone. So anyway, I'm going to continue on. After Pinky recovers from her faint, uh, all of her friends are there too well. Give her support, telling her that she can do it. And yeah, Spike is also there too, giving her confidence and whatnot. And yeah, they believe in her because her plan is sound. And yeah, there's, there's nothing to be afraid of. It's all in her head. So, the group decides to help Pinky in their own way. And let's see. Uh, I'm just going to skim through. Um, Applejack gives Pinky a really awesome juice to get her color back. And then, uh, Twilight just uh, goes over her presentation. And uh, Rarity is going over her style and fashion. And while what else? What else? Um, yeah, I guess style and fashion. Wow, that took a while. So yeah, I guess just the four of them or whatever. So, <clears throat> Rarity just says, "Oh, if you're not ready, I can be your understudy and um get on stage if you are not ready." But Pinky says she's already and all good, so she goes up on stage and delivers her um keynote. So. She tells about how awesome her thing is. And I'm not going to even, uh, what do you call this, um, summarize it. It's something for you at home to watch on your own and enjoy. Because it's very, very confusing at the same time too. <laughs> so, anywho, after all that is done, um, there's a few ponies that clap and whatnot, but Sorry, um, no. Pinkie Pie noticed that hey, there's nobody on stage except Pinkie, Pre- except for Fluttershy and Spike, and Fluttershy is willing to invest 
And Spike says nothing. And it makes Pinkie Pie feel very, 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 very nervous. And <laughs> after Pinkie Pie snaps at Spike to say something, uh, Spike says, oh, I, I was going to support you, but I was going to support you as a silent backer. <laughs> I mean, I can relate. Because I know there'll be moments where I'm doing something. And like th- th- I love how was, the longer she waits, the more I was taking the, the like the bomb or whatever. And it's like, <laughs> and then that, later on, she's crying. And I was like, say something! <laughs> yeah, we, we all go through that. We all go through that. And it's, and it's not something, what you call this, foreign. We all face those kind of things. So anywho, all of her friends... Uh, go up to Pinky, uh, Fluttershy, Spike, Applejack, Rev, Rainbow Dash, and Twilight. They they all give her support. And suddenly the stage lights up with a presentation from Rarity. I think Rarity is really, really into that, what you call this shirt and whatnot. And Pinkie Pie just says, oh, look at the time. Scene end and episode ends. <coughs> so... Tara, what do you think of uh, I Cookie and Kino Pie? Well, again, it's it's like a different way of showing a lesson, but it's still a good lesson because it's like, oh, you could learn this lesson in this way, or you could learn this lesson in this way. So it is uh, it is pretty good. I like the way they show it in a different way, and it, it had some good moments, a lot of good comedy. Uh, again, it's not that long; it's pretty short. Which I probably know by now. I've been repeating myself for that. <laughs> but for what it is, it was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I understand what you mean. And to me, like the most recent episodes, I, I think what? After Potion Nova came in, uh, most of the episodes are quite memorable. Like we had certain scenes where uh, the ponies kind of do something beyond the norm. Like with what, uh, Pinkie Pie putting on a black sweater, uh, glasses and possibly headphones and whatnot, uh, to mimic something like, uh, Steve Jobs or even the cookies for this recent episode or, um, last week where the group had a fight and was stuck in limbo. So the recent episode seems to go to this change of being really, really memorable. Where they're kind of cool. Yeah, pretty much. So anything more to add, Tara? Yeah, I pretty much covered them both. So anyway, as for me, um, I somehow enjoy them. Like there's, there's this change where, okay, there's two things. Either I have accepted the show for what it is, or the show has improved a bit where I am finding entertainment in it. Uh, which one it is, I got no idea. But hey, uh, as long as I'm enjoying it, that means they're doing something right. So, yeah, um, I, I can't wait to see what we're going to do for next next week or, well, the next episode and so on. But anyway, if we are done, I think we should move on to the next thing. So, Tara, what are we going to do for next week's review? Well, next week's review, we're going to be looking at a comic, uh, a mystery comic, uh, ish, uh, IEW, I believe. It says issue one, right? Yes, issue one of, oh, Mother Celestia, give me a second. This is why I don't like not getting ready. Uh, yes, <laughs> but, but anywho, we are, sorry, for next week's review, we are going to review Ponyville Mysteries, issue number one. So, uh, these are the, quote unquote short stories uh starring the CMCs before they got in their QT mark or after they got in the QT mark. I don't remember. I think it was after. After really. But anyway, uh we will talk about it next week when we take a look see at it properly. But yes, uh this will be one of those cool episodes or cool comics because it stars the CMC. Yay. Yay. So anyway if you guys at home have any questions or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at imagegmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Tara, where can the good people find you? 
Well, the good people can find me on Facebook, TV Night, Twitter, or YouTube under the name Torterra1324. Or if they just do a Google search, I'll be on all platforms, including my Patreon page. Awesome, awesome. Folks, go check him out. And <clears throat> also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And stay to radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like support... <laughs> If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Jeffrey, Master of Lag, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Roman Sanzo. And I have been Toyterra. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya! Bye bye. So, Tara, when was the last time you had stage fright? You remember? I can't remember the last time I had stage fright. I can. Oh yeah. So remember the time when we were uh, doing the show live on on uh, Babscon? Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Oh man, that that was wild. Like, I I was not ready. I got no idea what I was doing. And like, okay, let's do this how we like we usually do, but with cameras and uh, confidence, <laughs> with like with false confidence that makes us look good or something like that. And let's hope we don't dirt or say something bad. <laughs> that was like your first time being on a panel too, wasn't it? Uh, in a international level, yes. <laughs> oh man, that was something else. But yeah, I won't trade it. In, I won't trade it for anything in the world. Me neither. That was a good moment. Yep. Anyway, uh, I, I guess we just did it. See ya. Bye, guys. Bye.